This show is being brought to you by Grand Parade Outdoors. John O'Brien is the CEO of Grand Parade Outdoors, and he's been an agronomist for over 29 years. He's not just an agronomist, he is an educator. So if you go to Grand Parade Outdoors on the web, you're going to see that John is sharing his knowledge with anybody that wants to listen and become a smarter food plotter. He does have a special group called Team Grow, and you can join that. And get the inside scoop with John. He does private uh, seminars and shares private information. So check out Team Grow and Grandpa Ray Outdoors for the finest information on the web. Oh, yes. He has a full line of seeds that are as good as, if not better than, any other seed company in existence today. Let's Talk Deer. Let's Talk Deer is supported and sponsored by Grandpa Ray Outdoors. We receive funds from Grandpa Ray Outdoors for airing this show. Which of which I have four grandsons and one granddaughter. I want to make sure that they have some of the opportunities that I did to enjoy and to appreciate and to work with wildlife in the future as I've been able to do in the past. In the warm up, which again was extensive, folks, we were we were having a lot of fun. Things have changed, yeah. you know, in the hunting community. Why don't you go back to where you started? And I know you're close to the, the same ground you hunted a long time ago. It's been in the family since the 1800s. So just go back and, and kind of reminisce, if you will, and give people uh, just a short snapshot of what hunting was like when you were growing up, and then as you were turning into, you know, in your 20s and 30s and 40s and where you are today? <laughs> I'll, try, I'll try to do that in as scary words as possible. I grew up out in a rural community called Zimmerzite in uh, about 90 miles west of Houston and right on the edge of the Rio, uh, the uh, uh, Gulf Coast Plains and the, kind of the central part of Texas uh, in a community where everybody spoke German and low German and I couldn't hardly speak anything but those two languages until I started grade school but started hunting and fishing actually with my uh, granddad when I was probably oh my gosh six months old or something like that and uh, so I got an early appreciation to the outdoors he would come by and pick me up and we'd go hunting squirrels and uh, you know and fish and do those kind of things really got into the deer hunting immediately but unfortunately back then our part of Texas had very very few deer for variety of reasons, primarily habitat and a problem with the parasite called the screw worm fly. Over a period of time, they controlled the screw worm through some uh, biological ways of doing it and population started increasing and finally got a chance to not only be a deer hunter, but become a successful deer hunter. And the uh, first buck I take I took back then is still on my wall. I've told the story many times about it being the world record and shotgun coming apart that I was using over single shot shotgun and finally got up there and that world record turned in the most beautiful five inch spike on one side and four inch spike on the other side. But back then everybody hunted in our community. My mom hunted, my my, my dad of course hunted and the hunting was a, a big deal. Uh we'd all get together before the hunting season started, which back then was about November sixteenth and and so everybody would get together and have a grand time and if you shot a deer you were you were unbelievable hero, and if you even saw deer, you were a hero. So, came from that kind of background to working as a, a going to Texas A&M and, and working my way through college, and got married, and my wife and I existed on fish and venison throughout our early years, and and uh, kind of saw hunting change a little bit to where in the past I grew up, where I started on we we're hunting on our own property. I worked cattle and hauled hay to pay for my hunting rights, if you will, and and shared the bounty of whatever we got with the people whose places we hunted on. Over the years, we saw things change, become more economical for the landowner because as we put an economic value on those animals, they started taking care of the habitat. And that's something that is perpetuated into to even now. If we don't have an economic value on animals these days, they seem to tend to go by the wayside. So that's one of the things we've changed, seen change. Uh, change changes, I guess, in attitudes and in, in the, as everybody knows, I can remember seeing all kinds of hunting magazines and 
grew up reading Jack O'Connor and, and, and Robert Rourke and over a period of time saw those magazines change a little bit. Also saw the attitudes change in Hollywood, which led to some of the what I consider problems we have these days. But so it, it's continued to change and it will continue to change in the future. Uh, as, as we've increased the human population, we've put more pressure on those areas that do have wildlife. And for that reason, they have to be managed a whole lot more intensely. We can no longer just say, hey, let's just let them go back to nature because that won't work. We'll lose the, the, the primary wildlife species. And, and to me, it's not the primary wildlife species as well, but uh, uh, all the other game species. As a wildlife biologist, uh, which I worked for many years with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is setting up management programs for quality wildlife habitat, we found that when we started improving the habitat, not only did the white-tailed deer and the game species increase, dramatically the non-game species increase. So these are some of the things that we've learned along the way. I'm sure we're, we're, we're faced with challenges as far as hunting and concern, and primarily, it, unfortunately, it comes from those who do not wish to listen to real research, real real world situations. They, they live in a dream world, and uh, unfortunately, we're having to try to figure out how to change those. So hunting has changed a lot since we've come from where we were when I started where you shot primarily with a shotgun to where now we have extremely long range rifles. There's so many different other facets that come into play, but over the years, things have changed and, and they'll continue to change. And we just have to figure out ways to make certain that we do an excellent job of managing wildlife and habitat. And unfortunately more, probably more importantly is how to manage people and attitudes that people have. You know, we, we talked about the increase of, um, hunter safety throughout the country during um, this interesting time we're living in and yes sir. because people all of a sudden realize i want organic food i want to know where my food comes or they go to the market and one there's no beef which happened or the price of beef is just through the roof and i won't get any i'm not going to get into <laughs> the economics of that because that's all no up. no but you're right that's all jacked up. But let's talk about the three R's. And, and people, this is important because the three R's are retention, recruitment, and reactivation. Larry, right. talk about those. You're, you're exactly right. We came along during the time when, when I know you did and a lot of our listeners probably did when everybody kind of hunted and, and all that has changed. Uh, a lot of times people said, well, it's too expensive. Interestingly, if you look to see – compare what people spent in 1950 percentage of their gross income compared to what we would spend today uh, based upon those salaries years ago to compare to now that the percentage is still the same the dollar figure has, has changed somewhat we've seen a tremendous increase in oh my gosh the the the, the telephone the uh, computer generation and so i think what's happened is is we've kind of gotten away from everything as far as wild to have an understanding as to as where you mentioned where does the meat come from from the grocery store you know they don't realize that something had to die so that it could get to the grocery store but uh as we're hitting into the time that we are right now uh we've, we've seen an increase i know in several states in terms of fishing and hunting licenses which is absolutely fantastic because people have come to the realization that uh Oh my gosh, you know, there was no meat there, but hey, you know, I can go out and deer season is coming on. I can have a great time. I can take meat that I know where it came from. I know what it's been, you know, I know it's been on natural food. So it, it becomes kind of an uh, organic type of meat, if you will. To me, most meat is organic, but that's in their description is, is becomes organic. We've seen an increase in numbers and I think we'll see more all the time. And the hunter safety thing is, is a good indication as to, what we'll see in, in the future in terms of uh, increase in hunting license as, as well gun sales. I mean, gun sales and ammo sales have been out of the roof as of late. And uh, I think as we hit into the future, we'll see hunting become more to the forefront than it has for a long time to where so many people now are hunting for the, the great pleasure of being outdoors, but they're also hunting for the meat. So it's important that we, we, we let people know how all this plays into the perpetuation of wildlife and, and particularly deer species and some of the other species that we kind of consider food and how we can carry these into the future. With that being the case, uh, the uh, the recruitment becomes not only just on emphasis on kids, uh, 
to me, we need hunters of all ages. And I think we're seeing with what's going on that change to where it's, it's now emphasis is a little bit more on, hey, let's get mom and dad and aunt and uncle and grandma and grandpa involved in hunting as well, too. And they're doing so. Once they get into it, to me, the uh, retention becomes a whole lot easier uh, compared to what it's been in the past because now they're realizing that, hey, this food is absolutely delicious that we harvested out in the, out in the country, out in the field. And so I think if we can just continue like we are right now, then we're going to have to to some extent simply because of the, the kind of things that are placed upon us by this world. But I think in, as we go forward, there's with organizations like the uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, we have, I work in Texas with the Texas Wildlife Association, which has taken about 35,000 kids hunting in the last several years. Those kind of things, being involved with organizations that, that do something, Dallas Safari Club being another one, and there are others as well, too, that uh, really are, are trying to let more people know about how to get out in the field, uh, why it's important that they do beyond just the fact that, hey, they put some meat on my table or fish on the table. So if, if we head in the future, I really feel like we're in a little bit better position now than we have been in a long, long time. But the three R's will continue to be important. And anything that we can do to make sure that those things happen and continue to occur is something I think we really need to put our efforts into. Well, we've got to take a little commercial break. And um, Let's Talk Deer is sponsored by Grandpa Ray Outdoors, John O'Brien. John O'Brien's is a 26, actually 27-year veteran in agronomy what's that well he knows how to feed, feed cattle feed make things grow and then all of a sudden the food plot industry blew up and and john is a premier educator he goes around the country talking about food plots and you know it's 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 not the seed it's the soil and it's that one inch layer of soil that makes a difference so check out Grandpa Ray Outdoors, just go to and Google it and reach out to John O'Brien and become a team member at GRO, Grandpa Ray Outdoors. The second sponsor of Let's Talk Deer is Burner HD, Burner Home Defense. Burner is the world's finest non-lethal device. It's not a weapon. You don't need a background check. And... Thanks to Sean Hannity, uh, sales have been pretty good. People have realized that Burner HD is a tool that anybody can use, especially if you were hesitant about taking another person's life. This gives you a non-lethal opportunity to protect yourself and your family. Check out Burner HD, then reach out to me at promo code LTD2020 at gmail.com, and I'll tell you all about Burner. Thank you so much. Hey, let's wrap up the segment of Let's Talk Deer on Facebook with uh, Larry Wisham. Um, DSC Untamed Heritage. What the heck is that about? <laughs> I've been involved in the outdoor industry in a lot of different ways for a long time, including television, of course, writing and speaking and all those other kind of things. And to me, like uh, from our little visit before we started this thing today, we both like to tell hunting stories and listen to hunting stories. What we did is we started DSC's Untamed Heritage, which is a podcast, a weekly podcast that, that basically I do along with an occasional friend and occasional guest in different places uh, wherever I might be at the time. And it's it's a ways and means of, of kind of letting people know kind of what's going on, tell a few hunting stories, maybe kind of more in a parable type style to where you can entertain somebody with a hunting story about being charged by a bear or rattling up a white tail or crawling in the mountain and somewhere in there hopefully they can you know drop a few tidbits to where they can glean some information that might help them become more successful and, and two it's another way to let people know kind of what's going on in the world uh in the world of hunting we do a lot of things about north america but we also do a lot through uh the dsc foundation uh, which actually grants money to research and those kind of things, worldwide efforts where I serve on the DSC board and kind of let people know some of the projects that we're going working with at the time. And just like with right now, we've got a project going on called Hunter's Care, which is a, is a, a way to, for people to donate money that is tax deductible that goes directly to different operations in Africa 
to help prevent the serious poaching problems and those kind of things. If they want to learn more about that particular program, they can go to the DSC website, which is uh, B-I-G-G-A-M-E dot O-R-G, or, and there they can go to a direct link to the uh, the the, uh, the Hunter's Care, which is uh, 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 it's really a great way to put money into the hands of the people and support. And even if you just can come up with a few dollars here, a dollar, few dollars here means a lot in Africa, and it can help really keep some of the uh, serious poaching problems that are going on right now because there are no hunters in the field right now. This is the way things are within this world. But uh, that's all part of it as far as I'm concerned. But also to tell a few hunting stories, hunting fishing stories, get together with old guys like old friends, I should say, like Jim Zumbo and, and uh, a whole bunch of the other people that I've kind of run into over the years that I've been working in, in the outdoor field. And it's a, to me, it's a very fun uh, it's, it, it is. It's, it's a very fun conversation, if you will, kind of a campfire talk more than anything else. And how would they find that out? Where where would they find that? In uh... the, the best way right now, they can go to PursuitUpTV.com if they would like to. That's one of the sources. Or they can also go to uh, Blueberry.com, and it's uh, B-L-U- B R R Y dot C O M backslash uh, untamed heritage written together with a backslash and and we're, in the, we're this is we started this about a year ago so we're into our first year and again it's it's a weekly thing it comes out generally every Monday morning and are you up on iTunes and Stitcher and and, and it should be available Shopify on, and... it, it should be almost available it should be available in almost any place you can find it. Okay. But those two specifically, I can I can tell you that you can get to them pretty darn quickly. Now, if somebody wants to reach out to Larry, you know, how do they do that? <laughs> well, as, as you and I were talking, where I live now, my phone is, is kind of difficult at best. But probably the best way to do so is to uh, go to my Facebook, and it's Larry Weissen and Outdoors. That's probably the best place to, to try to get in touch with me and and if they sometimes I don't get on Facebook as often as I need to, but uh, I check it usually every other every other day if I'm around where I can, and that's probably the easiest and the quickest way to get in touch with me. Well, Larry, it it it's been a pleasure to have you on uh, Facebook Lives, uh, sponsored by Grandpa Ray Outdoors and Burner HD, and uh, I look forward to doing our podcast. And folks, uh, this. Uh, Facebook Live will be available. Uh, Larry will have the link. He'll have uh, to it, and so he can put it up on his Facebook page, which I'll share we'll with him. We'll do so. And so, uh, folks, thanks for listening, and, and check out Larry. And, and more important than that, remember the three R's, and invite somebody to go hunting. If you're a hunter, just go to your neighbor and say, hey, you know, why don't you come out with me, and we'll go out and shoot some birds, or we'll go out and hunt some squirrels, and and we'll just, you know, hang out. And and Lord knows we need to we need to get together. We need to find common ground. And um, in this old guy's uh, viewpoint, you know, if we can find common ground through hunting, it'll go a hell of a long way for solving some of the problems we face today. Larry's final thoughts. Hey, man, I agree with you totally. Get out and hunt, enjoy the outdoors, and, and appreciate the, what we've had handed us to over, for us over the last several years here in the United States. This is the greatest country there is. Still having some problems. We'll probably have problems in the future, but there's no better place than the USA. That was fun. Are you there? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. That was fun. Yeah, we went uh, almost 25, 45 minutes. So that's that's about right. And I'll get that file and I'll just I'll just yes, email it to you. Now you are getting and my emails. Is that correct? I, I I did I did not get the first one. Now there are others I have gotten. So I'm not sure. Weird. Again, I, I live in Texas. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not check the spam folder, but I will. But I, the, uh, the the last two or three that you sent, the first one I did not get. So, huh. uh, but the rest I did. I got to figure out how, how I can get my butt down to Texas and spend some time with you. Or if, yeah. if you're coming to the Rockies, let me know. 
I, I, I will. Once these things loosen up a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm changing some of the things that I've done. I've been in, uh, for years. I've had the DFC's Trail and the Hunters Moon TV show, which is running right now on uh, Outdoor. I'm sorry, on the Pursuit Channel. We've been yeah. doing that for about no, a whole long time. And uh, about a year ago, I gave it to my co-host, who started out as my cameraman, and then came went on to become my producer. And, and we're not uh, recording and, now, by the way. Just, no, I know. And yeah, and okay. uh, so I, I gave it. I gave the show to him in, in January 2019, and so that I don't have quite the responsibilities there that I did in the past, and so that I can do a few things here and there, and, and doing some going some hunts without a camera, which I had got to do last year, and. I am looking forward to doing some more this year and, and uh, those kind of things. So it, and I'm at the stage of my life and career now where I've got a little bit more time to kind of do some things that I want to. And as soon as I can get up to the Rockies, I, I promise you, I'll holler at you because I'll be hitting that way. Yeah. I mean, I got a nice guest suite downstairs, whatever, right by my office. Anyway, you're always welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. You're always welcome. And, any, and anything I can do to help, I'll I'll start publicizing this, and I'll get it shared by a bunch of different places as well, too. Yeah, well, we'll have fun, and, and it's just, you know, um, the longer I do this, the more connections, and I got to write this book, Return on relationships, you, ROR, not ROI. You, you do. You need to. You no, need to I, I really do. I, and I've had so many people, you know, I, when we meet up, and you know, I had some ugly times in my life, Larry. Just, just, I, I don't. I've been married for fifty years, and I don't know how my wife stayed with me. She just loved me through it. <laughs> no, it, it, I understand you can, my wife and I are almost married fifty-three years. So. Holy Lord, but it, it, you know, and. You know, it's just it's just amazing. And then, you know, then I talk to a guy like you, and it's just like, you know, we don't know each other, but we know each other because yes, sir. we walk the we walk the same trails. I yes, haven't sir. been to Africa, exactly. so I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen the sunrise or the sunset in Africa. But North America, there's very few mountains I haven't been on. I mean, from Angava Bay all the way to to Bristol oh my Bay. gosh. Blah blah blah. Because yes, I sure. for fly fish, you know. Oh, I to, fantastic! I used to be a, you know. Anyway, and you know, and I was fortunate, blessed, fortunate, you know, to to have the funds and, you know, to do the things I did, and uh, you know. Uh, yes, sir. It, it's just, you know, I, I, and I think of that, but then I get with a guy like you, and it's like, dang. You know, we're we're we have that common ground, and we that's, do. That's we the do. thing that people are missing. You know, I know, they, and I, they I wish there were a way that you could push that into somebody. And I, sometimes I almost feel like you have to you have to push it into them because they're so tied up with too many other things. Well, maybe you know, think about it, and maybe we'll we'll talk to Zumbo and 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 we I need to Jim and what? No, but we could get we could get a bunch of guys. With just if we could get ten guys, ten chapters, and and it's like uh, uh, KJ wrote that book about women, right. women hunt, or what was the name of it? Yes, sir. I I, I can't remember the title, but I yeah. know that I remember the book. But, yes, sir. but like half of the ladies were had been on my show, and then, yeah, how cool, how cool. <laughs> and and so, how did heck? I'm trying to think how I how I got tuned. Oh, I got tuned into to. to KJ with um with Zumbo somehow about the book and then right. her, her son was in the army here and so right. yes, I called my mm-hmm. buddies and we tried to get him hunting but he had to get a hunter safety card and he wasn't going to do that after you know uh, yeah sure he just wasn't going to do that anyway so you know we talk once a month or something anyway but Goodness. she wrote that book and there's 15, 18, 20 gals, and they right. she just tells a story about those 20 gals. Well, if we took 10 of us, and we all come from, we have common ground, but we all come from a different place. 
Yes, sir. You got Zumbo up there. You got you up there. I don't know if you remember Judd Cooney or not, Judd still alive. Yeah, I'm Judd taking... Cooney. I hunted in Iowa with him. I killed my first muzzleloader buck. I'm looking at him right now. It's a gorgeous. Oh, is that? It's a gorgeous ten pointer, and the damn thing was only two and a half, three and a half years old. Did I catch <laughs> the, shit for that? Oh lord. I was gonna say, did the old rascal fuss at you? Oh, geez. <laughs> I, I met Judd in 1970. Wow. They used to have early season high altitude hunts there yeah. in, out of Pagosa. Up, yeah. And I was sitting on a ridge way the heck up. And uh, I was working for the game department at the time. And he was a local game warden. And I'm sitting there, and this guy rides up on horseback out in the middle of nowhere. And I, he, he and I kind of both used to look at each other and, and uh, got to visiting with him. Of course, he had done a little bit of riding, and I'd been done a little bit of riding. And, and we became fast friends and good friends ever since then. And unfortunately I don't get to see him very often anymore now, but I mean, Judd and I go back a long time ago. Oh yeah. And anyway, yeah. So, so I know, but Judd you're right. Anyway. The, Look, there's another the, the, guy. What the hell? <laughs> I can't believe we never met. I, I just, Oh yes, sir. <laughs> I, I like just, said, like you said, I can't believe our, and maybe our paths did cross at one of these things where you were walking one way and I was walking the other way. We just kind of glanced at each other and, you know, unfortunately didn't take the opportunity to speak. Yeah, well, whatever. No, it doesn't yeah. matter. No. <laughs> we're in, I'm in trouble now. My wife's going to go, you're going to do what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Fantastic, I'm Bruce. I've, I've right. got to get onto a family matter this morning. Uh, my mom is 94 years old. She's How much time do you have left? Uh, how, how much the, do I have left right now? Yeah. Oh, probably about five, six minutes, and then I got to go. All right. So we got to do this again because we never got okay. to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we, we will. Just let me know when you want to, want to try to do something. The only commitments I have for a while is I serve on the DSC Foundation Board, and I, I spend a fair amount of time running back and forth to Dallas, which is about four hours north of here. Right. And But beyond that, I, I can be available pretty much almost any time. Okay, so next it, week, it, I'm going to set it up right now. I just sent you a picture of my buck with Judd. Okay. Um, now, next week, yeah, because we just did two more talking, but that's okay. 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 So next week, what's your schedule? I can, right now, my schedule pretty much is open for next week. Okay. How about, how about um, 6 a.m., 8 a.m.? That's on Tuesday. Okay. You, 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 uh, I'll tell you what. Send me an email, and I will confirm uh, with you. But right now, like I said, for the most part, uh, I have. I don't have to run to Dallas. I just got. I was in Dallas all this early part of this week, so right. I don't have to go to Dallas next week. Okay, and we, and we got to book out at least an hour. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm not going to apologize because I'm just, you know, we got so much in common. I mean, well, I agree. We could have <laughs> gone to college together. Yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> Except you were an Aggie. I was a Badger. Yes, so. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All uh, right, you go. Enough. Hey, take care of your yes, take care of your mom. And this has been an absolute pleasure. It it has been my pleasure and honor, and I look forward to next week. And I'll confirm with you very quickly, and we'll get it set up. Okay. Thanks. Bye. I appreciate you. Thank you. We'll see you, Bruce.